Hey, what's up y'all? Since we're all in quarantine together, I thought I might as well be productive and make a video about some cool future, now present day tech. Now I know things are looking a little bleak right now. Uh, we're all stuck inside. The economy's taking a beating. And a lot of people are scared. But I am optimistic that this won't last forever. We're all gonna get through this together. As long as we stay inside, we've got a bright future ahead. And that bright future is what I wanna talk about today and why I believe this real graphene battery charger signals a massive shift in battery technology, which is gonna lead to a, a brighter future for us all. If you're interested in learning more, stay tuned. So to get us all to the same page, I'm gonna give a brief overview of what graphene is. I'm also linking a video made by the awesome people over at Cold Fusion, one of my favorite YouTube channels. They really highlight the history of graphene, their take on it, and, and some other points that I just didn't mention in this video. But what is graphene? So graphene is carbon. So you think diamonds, you think graphite in your pencil lead, and then you've got your graphene. Graphene is very similar to your pencil lead. However, it being in a hexagonal pattern in a 2D structure gives it a lot of really cool physical properties. One, it's extremely malleable, stretchable, if you will. Two, it is super strong. I'm talking 200 times the strength of steel, two atoms thick of graphene is bulletproof. Like this stuff is intense, it can take a pounding. And thing three, it is super conductive, both electricity and heat. It's one of the most conductive materials that humans have found so far. Now that I think about it, it's kind of like the real life vibranium. Huh. So graphene was first theorized back in 1980 something, 83 if I'm not mistaken, I'll leave a link down below, uh, don't quote me on that. And then it wasn't an actual physical thing until 2004. But what's really cool now is that this company, Real Graphene USA, has made the first consumer facing product that allows us to extract the essentially magic that is graphene. Their first products exist in the form of portable battery packs. There's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery that I have here, as well as a 20,000 milliamp hour battery that you can buy from their website. What's really cool about these is instead of the typical lithium ion battery cells that you'd find in say your phone or your laptop, this uses a lithium ion and graphene composite, which has graphene's unique quality of being super conductive. So instead of using a typical 12 volt charger, you're able to use a 60 watt MacBook charger to charge up the battery. So why should you care? This 10,000 milliamp hour battery, roughly three times the size of my iPhone 11 Pro Max, still a terrible name, charges from zero to 100% in only 50 minutes. That would be roughly 16 and a half minutes to charge your iPhone from zero to 100% if it had the same battery technology. See, now you're starting to see where I'm going with it. Here's my prediction start. I'm linking another video, also by Cold Fusion, about Samsung's uh, graphene hybrid battery. Uh, but long story short, Samsung already has the ability to create a graphene composite battery for smartphones. And there actually being a product out there, it's starting to get some internet hype. There might be more of a demand for consumers to demand that technology within their phone. Oh, I also forgot to mention, graphene batteries, they degrade way slower than a typical lithium ion battery. Uh, your phone battery, you probably noticed after about two years, it's basically dead. Typical lithium ion batteries only rated for 600-ish charges, while a graphene composite, 1500. So that's like a four year battery life compared to the, two, well, a little over four years than compared to the, the two years that we're used to. Honestly, I just hope Apple adopts this technology and uh, throws it in the iPhone so we can finally have USB-C on the iPhone. Uh, one of my Apple insiders let me know one of the reasons Apple is not in a rush to add USB-C is because USB-C is just not there yet. A lot of the knockoff cables would send too much power, uh, probably, explode some phones, you might have a, a Note 7 scenario. You guys remember that? Uh, prediction number two, Tesla. It's really hard not to consider Tesla whenever you're talking about battery technology. They're kind of the gold standard. Their team is S tier. They've been pushing batteries, electric vehicles, solar. I mean, rule one, just don't doubt Elon. That's kind of what I've learned. But um, the reason I think Tesla is because as they advance their supercharger network, they're gonna need batteries that can hold more current coming in. As many of you may already know, Tesla is rolling out their V3 superchargers. Uh, there's one over here in Fremont, oh, I'm in the Bay, and one down in Hawthorne near LA. And over the next few years, they're gonna be revamping and I guess revitalizing their existing network to have these V3 superchargers. So a couple stats on the V3. You're able to charge 75 miles in five minutes 
or 1,000 miles per hour. That's a lot better than what Tesla does today. However, it's still not even close to the energy density of filling up gasoline into a combustion engine car. For example, I just filled up my Honda Civic. It only took about three minutes to get 400 miles of range. So that puts it around 140-ish miles per minute. I think 137 is closer to the real number. As compared to Tesla's V3 chargers, their current fastest technology, 75 miles per five minutes, which is 15 miles per minute. Pretty huge energy disparity when you're looking at 15 versus 137. But what if we put more power? So this is more of a moonshot than a long shot, but let's look at Elon. The likelihood that he's just going to stop at the V3 supercharger just seems, it seems impossible. It doesn't seem like his style. The V4 is going to be coming eventually. He's probably already started development. So one of the biggest things keeping people from buying electric cars, other than the price, they are a bit expensive still, is range anxiety and how long it takes to refuel. Because not only is it only 15 miles per minute worth of range, you also, depending on where you are, and if you're in the Bay Area, you are, you're waiting in line to get to these chargers. So you have to wait maybe 15 or 20 minutes just to get your turn to hop into one of these supercharging stations, which will still take you probably 40-ish uh, minutes to charge. Comparing that to about like a five minute in and out at a gas station, that's a pretty big blocker towards a lot of people, especially if you're looking at road trips and things of that nature. If you're doing your normal day-to-day -day routine, it's not that big of a deal because you'll be able to trickle charge at home, get a few miles, just to do your normal day commute. But when you actually want to start doing distances, it's a real bear to have to stop so frequently and have to wait so long because say I'm going from here in the Bay down to LA, I'll have to stop at least twice to make it all the way down there. And that automatically adds an additional hour and 30 minutes to the trip. So like for some people it doesn't matter, others it does. But when you're able to up the energy input per minute, that's gonna make electric cars a much more viable option. And really the only way to speed it up is to be able to shoot more juice into the battery. But the V3 battery chargers already shoot a lot of electricity into these batteries. And with current technology, probably shouldn't go much further than that because overheating, boom. That's what's really cool about graphene. Since it's super conductive, it's able to like spread the heat out very evenly so no individual cell gets too hot. That's a big reason why the battery degradation is so limited since it's not overheating part of the battery. Now, I know I didn't think about this before Elon did. I mean, he's a smart dude. So I really hope to see Samuel Gong and Elon. Oh yeah, Samuel Gong, he's the CEO of Real Graphene. I really hope to see them work together and collab since, I mean, Real Graphene is LA based. Elon spends a lot of time in Hawthorne, not too far from each other. Real Graphene produces the composite. I could see potentially Tesla buying them. Maybe they, I don't know. I don't really know where to go from there. That's as far as I got in this thought process. Uh, I don't know how to invest in graphene. Promise if I knew how to, I definitely would like today. But yeah, so cool batteries, super fast charging, um, super conductive. Can we make a shield out of it though? Hope you learned something. Later.